Hello and welcome back to the final lesson in the drone precision mapping tutorials. By now you'll know how to set up an enterprise drone with RTK and cause corrections to accurately geolocate your images, know how to process those images into a map and then export that for sharing with clients via a web portal. We kept things very high level and easy to understand but in life not everything goes according to plan. So here are a number of troubleshooting tips and some best practices that I use to keep my life easy and my clients happy. I'll start with troubleshooting and then move on to best practices later. First up, low quality maps. There are a few things that might cause this, but most often this is caused by poor lighting conditions, which can cause motion blur or cause the ISO to climb too high. If you're finding that the photos that you're feeding into the software are blurry, then there are a few things to check. First, make sure that you're not flying too fast for the conditions. In general, the closer to the ground you are, the slower you will need to fly to avoid motion blur. You can also improve the chances of a clean capture by increasing your shutter speed to 800 or above. However, only do this if you can safely do that without the ISO values climbing above 400. Anything above that and the amount of noise in the image can be a problem. If the images are sharp but the results are not, then it is likely that your settings in your photogrammetry software are incorrect. For example, if you're processing on a local machine in WebODM, it reduces the quality by default to help ensure faster processing. You can fix that by going into the options and changing DEM resolution and ortho photo resolution to two or lower. These changes will be different from different machines and different software, but it's worth doing some digging to find the best options for you. Next up, RTK not locking. Sometimes you'll find that RTK fails to lock even after waiting a long time. This is most often caused by a weak network connection to cores, poor satellite visibility, or trying to connect to a cause site that is down or too far away. There are a few steps you can take to try to fix this. Start by restarting the drone and your controller and making sure that your controller has a good internet connection. This is especially true if you've changed parameters such as the RTK connection points. If that doesn't solve the problem, it could be that the drone doesn't see enough satellites. In that case, turn off RTK to enable the drone to take off, climb high enough to clear nearby obstacles, and then turn RTK back on and see if you can connect. If things are still not working, it may be that the cause station you are connecting to is not working. Go to the cause network status page and make sure that everything is still up. I've seen a few times where either a single site was down or in one case the whole network was down for a whole day. If you've tried all that and it's still not working, you sometimes have no choice but to continue. In that case, you can capture with the RTK unit installed but switched off. The drone will capture additional files that can be used with downloaded cause files to post process and I'll link to a video about that here. Software processing errors in WebODM. There are several reasons why WebODM may fail. Insufficient memory is obvious because the system usually tells you that. If you have that problem, you can try reducing the number of images or offloading processing to the cloud, and I'll link to two videos covering that. But other problems can occur if you don't provide enough overlap between images for the system to line things up, or if the images are too similar, such as when there are a lot of trees or parallel lines which can confuse the software. If the problem is caused by insufficient overlaps, make sure that your overlaps are at least 70% front and side for a 2D map. For other problems, the WebODM forum is a great place to start and the people there are very helpful. Next up, gaps in photo capture during mapping. This is most frequently caused when the mapping software is set to distance instead of timed intervals. Distance has the advantage that you get very consistent spacing even when the drone slows down and speeds up to make turns. However, it relies on the camera being triggered remotely by the controller. So if there is an issue with a signal caused by blockage or distance, then it might miss some shots. The easiest solution 
is to switch to a timed interval. Doing that, the camera capture command is sent just once at the start of the mission and the camera will continue to capture even if the signal is lost. This can result in a few more photos than you need, but it is worthwhile in terms of reliability. If this is not being caused by signal interruption, then it may be that your SD card is too slow. To fix that, make sure you pick cards with a fast write speed and only buy from reputable dealers as there are quite a few fake cards out there. I've been using SanDisk Extreme cards for years and have never had a problem with write speed. Another problem that can occur is when the drone stops because there's an obstacle when in fact there isn't one. The most common reason for this is that the drone is flying towards the sun and that confuses the collision avoidance sensors. To fix that, there's a few things you can try. Start by making sure that the collision avoidance cameras are clean. If they are and you're still having problems, then you will have no choice but to turn off obstacle avoidance. Depending on the drone or the app, you can turn off just one direction, so I would do that. Once you finish the job, don't forget to turn them back on again. Now we'll move over to best practices. First up, keep everything organized on site. When you're flying at a site, it's very easy to lose track of things, particularly on longer flying days. Here are a few of my favorite tips to keep yourself organized and on track and ensure you don't forget anything. First up, bring a shot list. It's very easy to get on site, run around capturing things, and then only find out you missed a key part of the capture when you return back to the office. To avoid that, simply make a list of the shots that you need and then perform them in order and tick them off as you go. SD card management. If you're doing a lot of work, then it's easy to lose track of which SD cards have been used. To avoid confusion and make sure I never accidentally overwrite a card that has images on it, I use a system of SD card holders that are green and red. Cards in the green holder are ready to be used and can be safely formatted once inserted. Cards in the red holder have data that needs to be offloaded. Before leaving a site, I remove the SD card from the drone, place it in the red holder and replace it with a card from the green holder. We only ever go in this route, green to drone, drone to red, red to PC, and then back to green. Doing this, I know exactly how many SD cards I have left, which ones have data that needs to be offloaded, and I can be sure I never accidentally overwrite the files that I need. Next up, document everything. Log your RTK base location, flight parameters, GCP coordinates, and other notes, especially for repeat or regulatory jobs. Another good option is to take some screenshots of the mission when it is running. This can include things such as the GSD and the flight altitude. I was saved in the past when a client suggested I had set the wrong GSD based on his guess just looking at the pictures. A simple text of the screen showing the mission GSD parameters and their fears were put to bed. Next up, label and organize data immediately. If you're using newer drones, such as the Mavic 3 Enterprise, then Pilot 2 names folders based on tasks that you run. Some apps like DroneLink allow you to create folders as part of the mission, assuming you're on a drone that supports naming, and I would recommend doing that. It makes life so much easier later. This not only helps you to stay organized, it helps with copying because you don't accidentally mix files with the same folder name, such as DCIM. Next up, use ground control points or GCPs strategically. While we didn't cover GCPs and checkpoints in this tutorial, it is always a good idea to have them. Checkpoints in particular will enable you to validate that the data you have created is in the right spot and has not shifted. And if you have GCPs, this will give you a backup plan in case the checkpoints let you know something is wrong. I'm planning on doing a future video on how to use GCPs and checkpoints in WebODM as it's too big a task to handle here, so I won't say more than you should use them if you can. Plan redundancy into flight paths. When creating maps, particularly of structures such as roofs, it's a good idea to add a little extra room around the outside. Frequently, the software will create a flight path that doesn't go all the way to the edge as it should be covered by the camera, and that can cause areas to be missed. 
better to add a few minutes to the flight than miss something because of that. As a general rule, add about 10% around the structures that you need to capture. Use software to preview results. After a mapping flight, use WebODM's quick preview to identify any data gaps before leaving the site. This can help ensure you don't have gaps in the capture, which can happen particularly if you're using distance capture instead of time capture. As mentioned earlier, time capture is a much more reliable method if you're going to be in an area with poor connectivity to the drone. Managing client expectations. Make sure you understand your client needs and skills by asking some careful questions. For example, if you ask them whether they want D-Log or regular color profile, and they look at you as if you have two heads, then don't give them D-Log under any circumstances, or you'll be spending time talking the client off the ledge because they think the whole shoot is ruined. And if you're not sure, just keep it as simple as possible. Don't waste money on powerful machines. Processing costs can add up if you're running large jobs frequently, and there are definitely times when building a powerful processing machine makes sense. But I've seen people spend thousands of dollars building a powerful processing rig to process just a few maps a month, and it's unlikely they'll ever recoup that investment with the savings in online processing fees. In my case, I process smaller maps locally on the machine I have. It's a good machine, but it lacks the RAM required for larger jobs. Larger jobs are processed online, often using WebODM Cloud. This still allows me to download the results for storage and viewing, but avoids the need to spend thousands upgrading my PC. Landing pads. If you're working in dirty and dusty areas like construction sites, then one of those landing pads is a great idea for keeping the drone and the lens clean and dust free. But if you're using rocks to keep it in place on windy days, don't take the rocks off until you have a good grip on it. Well, that's it for now. There are many more ways to improve your workflow, but one of the things I really love about creating these videos is how much I learn in the process. So I would love to hear from you. So feel free to leave a comment with your favorite tips and tricks, and I'll see you in the next video.